Hey all, and welcome to another episode. This week we'll be covering the API call flow. Now, what is the API call flow? Unfortunately, this is a question that I have to ask because a lot of people do not know the answer to this. The API call flow is basically how the API traverses your entire API architecture from the second that it enters um, your uh, uh, DNS to the load balancer, to your gateway, to the API server, to your message queue, and then it leaves back out again to your um, to uh, the response to your client or whatever your architecture may be. That is the entire API call flow in your architecture. That's that's what we're concerned with. We're not talking about how it traverses from the client to your architecture. We're concerned with the API call flow within your architecture. Because, God, the, the, the call when getting to your architecture can be, um, you know, pretty, pretty vague. But the API call flow within your architecture. Now, how does that work? So, Starting very, very, very basically with just an API server, I'm going to draw this out. Now, I, I have a menu over there with uh, um, the request and the response done in red and green so that you can see how they work um, in your architecture. The request is done in red, red lines, and the response is done in green lines. And I'm going to talk about um, what each of these is, each one of these lines, so you can get a better idea of what they are. First, let's talk about how the API server talks to itself. Because the API server does actually um, talk back to itself. And it does this one of two ways. One of the ways that it does this, and it's probably the way that you're most familiar with, is a redirect. One second. Uh, the redirect. Now, whenever you want to redirect back to your API server, say to call another endpoint or something like that, is that each time you do a redirect, you drop a thread, you issue a response, notice it's in green, you drop the session, and when you drop a thread, drop the session, everything like that, um, and uh, that thread will hang. All the resources will hang for like about 30 seconds. People have questioned me on this. Is it 30 seconds? Yes, it's 30 seconds. 30 seconds is the default. Um, now you can change that, but uh, if you start changing the garbage collection um, defaults and things like that, you're gonna have a few issues and so most people just leave them. This is why it's the default. Um, depending on um, what kind of services you have, uh, what this may be longer, this may be slightly shorter, but default. 30 seconds. Every single time you do, do a redirect, those threads hang. And by the time you do a complete round robin outside of your architecture through the DMC and come back in and reissue a thread, they're still hanging and hogging resources. So imagine if you did like a couple hundred thousand redirects, how much memory and processing power that would hog tons not to mention the I.O. overhead on all of those redirects. That is a ton of I.O. overhead, ton of memory being hogged, etc., etc., etc. Now, the other way that you can do, uh, that you can talk to your API server is with a forward. This is also known as an internal redirect. A lot of people are not familiar with this. I actually had a conversation with somebody over at Kong, the API gateway, and he insisted that a forward is just a, a Java methodology. Um, well, it's called a forward in, in Java, that's true, but an internal redirect is not a, a, a uh, Java methodology. You can do this in any language. He also insisted that the way you do a forward through a front controller, that a front controller was also a Java methodology. Keep in mind, this is Kong. K-O-N-G. Kong. Um, a front controller is a pattern. 
Uh, it's a pattern that is part of MVC. It's used in every MVC architecture. And it is basically the pattern that intercepts the request and response and determines how it's used within your MVC architecture for the most part. So again, yet another quality pro uh, project by very, very insightful and knowledgeable people. Kong. So back to what we're talking about. Forward. So a forward is an internal redirect and it uses the existing request because the existing request has all of your headers. It has the token um, with your security and everything already in it. So if you're forwarding to another API endpoint, you already have the token with the roles and the security and everything that you need to determine whether you have access to that. So you don't have to do a redirect. You already have all the, all the information you need to determine whether um, this person has access to that other endpoint. So you just forward internally to that other endpoint and check their security at that other endpoint, like you already do with the annotations. Uh, and um, yeah, it routes through the front controller, so it's really not that, that much of an issue. So which of these two do you think is faster and more efficient in your system? Obviously, it's a forward. I mean, you can just take a look at the two versus a redirect. It drops threads. It has high I.O. and and has to do a complete round robin outside of your architecture. So why aren't people using forwards? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, the, I, I think people just aren't knowledgeable. Um, so moving on, what is shared state? Well, let's first talk about what state is. State is basically all that information tied to your endpoints that you need to share with the other services in your architecture, hence shared state. Um, so let's talk about those things that are state, which should be shared. For instance, routing information. Routing has to be shared. I mean, we need to know how to redirect to those endpoints. Security needs to be shared. When we're redirecting, we need to know, should we redirect? <laughs> and data, we also need to check if people are sending the right data um, so that we can reject early or reject late. Um, that's part of the OWASP uh, API security guidelines, by the way, people. So if you're not following that, you're not secure. Uh, something that I have to bring up with OpenAPI all the time. Hmm. So let's take a look at an example. Not may not be your API architecture, but I just threw this up here as an example API architecture. An example um, architecture and how we would basically share that state. So an API gateway um, has load balancing and routing and security and data. I mean, we have to route the API. We have to secure that saying, does this person have access to this um, endpoint? And are they sending the right data? Same thing with the message queue. Um, we need to say, oh, uh, we need to route for a web hook. We need to, um, we may need to uh, redirect. We need, and uh, obviously I didn't put in a redirect back to the API server, but you have a redirect back to the API. Oh, actually that, that's a good point. It would redirect back to the API gateway. You don't redirect back to the API server. Um, but yeah, you would need to handle for a redirect or something like that because you can't do a forward from this point. And when redoing, um, when getting that data from the API server, we need to check, are they sending the right data? Otherwise we need to reject here too. So each one of these would be sharing the exact same state. Thus we need to share this state. We need to synchronize it. Um, we can't just make a static doc, send it on over and say, there you go, there it is. Um, but in a sense, um, that's kind of what shared state is. But we also need to lay a foundation for future functionality of synchronizing this on the fly. That's kind of what shared state is about. But why? Well, First, we need to determine what the central version of truth is so we can determine 
whether this is the state we need to be sharing. I bring this up because I had a discussion recently with the maintainer of OpenAPI. And I stated the API server is the central version of truth. This is because that's where the request and the response meet. He stated, no, the open API doc is the central version of truth. I said, wrong. The open API doc is generated from the API server <laughs> in your environment. You can write one by hand all you want, but you are trying to match <laughs> the API server, which is the central version of truth where the request and response meet so that they can talk about your endpoints <laughs> or talk to your endpoints, depending on your um, verbology. Uh, <laughs> and I was just like, how can you say a static document is the central version of truth when calling your API server, it's your endpoints. The request and the response are talking to and receiving da data from your endpoints. That is the central version of truth, not a document that is generated from that. So getting that out of the way and, then, and just settling that once and for all, we need to share that central version of truth. We need to share that data with all other services. Um, all other uh, duplicate API servers, for example, to make sure they are all, um, they all have the same state as well. And how would we do that? Well, one way is with a localized cache. At runtime, uh, you can push via webhook to all subscribing services so that they can put this data in a local memory or a localized cache that they can read from uh, anytime they want. Uh, if any one of these goes down, um, they will, uh, well, if the API gateways or anything like that go down, they can always read again from uh, the API server's uh, uh, cache. If the API server goes down, uh, it, can, it will automatically push to all the other uh, server's caches and uh, it's, it's fine. Uh, so everything can easily stay in sync. Now I go one further in the B API framework so that I can uh, reload state on the fly and I can update state on the fly uh, by reloading um, each one of these uh, documents and it will uh, push out that state to all subscribing services at any time I want. So I can put up new versions um, and uh, a new state to my entire architecture on the fly. Uh, but that requires a little engineering and it's not, uh, it, it requires uh, implementing the, the new API pattern. And I'm not going to go into that in, this, in these slides. The other way you can do this is with a shared cache. Now shared cache um, adds IO overhead, which is why I didn't cover this one first. But some people do like this. Um, the way you do this is that you push to an external caching mechanism uh, like MongoDB or something like that and everybody just reads from that. The problem with this is that A, you have IO overhead and B, that external cache can go down and then everything goes down. Some people prefer this or like this. I do not because of those, those two separate things that it can create um, uh, A, A, an additional point of failure and be the IO overhead. So I try to stay away from this. But uh, there's, there's no arguing with some people. So <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, now, what is the difference between this and between shared state and open API? Well, open API um, does not synchronize. It is static state. And second, it is pushing the state from the API gateway to the central version of truth. Now it's trying to force a unsynchronized modified state upon what is the central version of truth. 
this gets complicated. That would be like the, in a master-slave database situation, a modified, unsynchronized slave trying to tell the database, the master database, what data it has. Your data will get out of sync really, really fast. And that is really dangerous and your database will become 100% corrupt. Same thing with this. Your APIs will become corrupt. Um, and it's, it, it's not necessary necessarily true, but there is a very high likelihood. Very high likelihood. Um, and it's, it's all human error. It's 100% it's human error because you're not synchronizing them. And let's talk about that. So open API, you generate the open API document and they say that in order for if you have any additional changes that you need to make for security or anything like that, you add extensions, you change the data, you add the security by hand as you need to. So you modify this doc. You're generating a document, you're modifying the doc by hand, you're adding in everything that you need, and then you load it on up to the API gateway. And it forces its state upon what is the central version of truth. This is not synchronized in any way. And they have even stated so. The open API team says this is not shared state, it is not synchronized in any way. And several of them have said it is not intended for an API gateway. It is just a design doc. So hopefully this clears up your questions on several different things. The API call flow, shared state, um, and wow. Um, I know this is a lot to cover. I know several people are going to have questions, especially if none of you knew about call flow and shared state. So feel free to post your questions. Check out BAPI. Check out our GitHub uh, repository. Um, especially check out our GitHub repository. Lots of good code there. Lots of good projects to download and um, have fun with, as always. And um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to, free to post them. And thank you again for watching.